Hi folks, my name is Matthew Harrison. I'm a farming system scientist at the University of Tasmania. In this webinar we'll be looking at sustainable grazing thresholds and how you identify them. I'll be using GrassGrow. Uh, it's a simple biophysical model for sheep and beef cattle farming systems, but the model it really doesn't matter about the model, it's the approach to uh, identifying sustainable grazing thresholds that we're more interested in here. So I'm not going to talk about any of the technical details of the model, except to say that I've set it up for a standard sheep grazing system, so it's actually weathers, uh, they're castrated males, I've got a stocking rate of 25 sheep per hectare, December shearing, which is probably typical for southeastern Australia, uh, I've got typical pasture types for the region. So I've got a, a simulation analysis running here from the start of 1980 to the 31st of the 12th, 2008. So I hit run, so it's the model is running on a daily time step. For each time step it's calculating pasture growth, soil water infiltration, rainfall, as well as grazing offtake, and then corresponding growth after that defoliation. So it's a rate state model. It's essentially a dynamic model that, and the growth on one day is dictated by the biophysical pasture conditions of what's happened the day before. So it's, I've ran the analysis. Now what should happen is it should pop up with a report. That report will have a bunch of variables in it, outputs and, and so on. We're really only interested in one variable in this case. So it's, it's going to talk about climate, it's going to talk about pasture composition. Uh, really what you want to look for in your model is ground cover or a similar metric to that ground cover. So if we go down to sustainability in this case with grass grow, so there's a couple of different ways you can visualise ground cover and it's very important to look at this. So this is daily ground cover. So you can see that from the start of the simulation to the end ground cover is very variable. That's usually responding to climatic conditions primarily. It goes up in spring. It goes down in summertime, mainly lowest in probably late summer, early autumn, which is typical of Mediterranean climates in southern Australia. Uh, and you can see that it peaks in the springtime. It's also reduced by grazing because we've got on average 25 sheep per hectare and that's what's called a stocking rate. So the more sheep per hectare that you have, the greater the offtake. So these dangerously low periods are where you're at risk of soil erosion. So it's... When your ground cover is low, you've got much greater risk of uh, uh, wind, but potentially also water erosion of the soil because you've got less vegetative cover on that uh, on per unit area. So essentially, we want to minimise those periods of low ground cover. So you can see that it goes up and down, and there's probably you know you could probably identify other trends in that graph as well. So we just hit OK with that. Really, we want to identify well at what is the, uh, is the grazing regime that I'm operating sustainable or not? So another way, uh, probably a more systematic way of looking at ground cover is to look at a probability distribution function. So what this is showing is uh, the probability that ground cover across the whole farm will be above a certain value. Okay, so if we look at 50%, so if we go out at 50% horizontally and we hit the value here, it's about 0.4, not quite, but roughly. So it's saying in 50% of years, I've got a ground cover of 0.4 uh, vegetative dry matter per square metre of ground. So is that enough? Well, therein lies the question. So we're about to get to that. But this graph is very useful. So what we're, <coughs> what we're really looking for is 70% cover in 70% of years. Uh, it's a simple rule of thumb, but I've worked with many an industry consultant and farmer and found that that algorithm is roughly about right. And so it's actually part of the, it's built into the results here. What this is showing it, again, in a different way, it's accumulating the, the daily ground cover in any given year, and it's showing you the percentage of time that ground cover is less than 70% or 0.7. So you can look at that and say, well, some years you know, in which you get high rainfall, it's very good. Other years, it's nearly less than 70% ground cover for the whole year. So you might suspect that that's getting a little bit too low. Really what we want to see, so another way, so it's it's quite useful how grass grow has done it. It's been tabulated in a number of different ways, and that's typical of farm systems modelling. You can 
look at metrics in many different ways. What we really want to see here is we, if we abide by that 70% cover in 70% of years, we want that proportion of years in which cover is less than 70% to be below 30. So if it's above 30, well, that means that your stocking rate is too high. So we go back to the simulation. We might say, OK, we've got 25 sheep per hectare. We might try 22. So we revise that, we hit run again, and that's quite typical of modelling in revising something, testing the outputs uh, and rerunning again. And so going through that iterative cycle of uh, identify, adjust, repeat the simulation and analyse the results again. So we just run the simulation again and see how that ground cover has changed. Just wait a minute for this result to come up. The uh, report and then we'll scroll down to the bottom and look at ground cover so sustainability uh, and you can see that potentially the frequency of years in which those low those low very ground very low ground covers are reached are less uh, so if you look at cover in 70% of years so it's about halfway between the 0.6 and the 0.8 it's about 0.3, so that is another way of looking at the percentage cover. So you would want that to go through about 0.3, so that indicates it's about right. Here we've got this annual ground cover threshold, you can also look at that. But here is the key one, so it's really accumulating it across the whole simulation period and saying yes, in uh, only in 28% of years your ground cover is less than 0.7 and so in my view that's satisfactory. So you've got you've obviously still got some years where you have to manage erosion carefully. So you might choose to supplementary feed or remove animals in those years but on average that's sustainable. And why does that matter? Because typically in farming systems models the higher you put your stocking rate the higher the live weight productivity and the greater the pasture utilisation. So you could keep increasing that but you'd be increasing it at the expense of ground cover. So that's all I wanted to say in this webinar. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.